Hey everybody. Um, so I, uh, I'm getting into Necromunda. Um, I, I got one of the, uh, the new Hybor starter boxes and, uh, it comes with, um, a bunch of the, uh, sector, what do they call it? Uh, sector, whatever, like the deadliest you know, underhive uh, um, section stuff. It's like the grim dark kind of um, sci-fi, you know, gothic, gothic sci-fi. You know, like 40k. Um, so, like, I want to use them for 40k for uh, Necromunda. You know, I want to use them for Stargrave. Um, it's a cool system. I think it has a lot of potential. Um, I, uh, I kind of went off on a rant for a little while about the, um, the add-ons that I got and like how the, the way that they engineered them to like fit together. And it's just, it's so dumb. Like, like it's such a simple solution to, to fix. And then the way that they did it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of build on this stuff and make a bunch of, um, terrain, or at least I'm planning to to make like a, a pretty good sized uh, amount of modular stuff for like Frostgrave and Necromunda and I guess like Kill Team or, you know, any kind of whatever I wanted to play that was sci-fi. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I went uh, really, really uh, grim, dark, um, rusty, rusty metal and um, yeah, a lot of a lot of rust and weathering. So, anyways, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's do some painting. All right. So last night, I uh, finished gluing up uh, this. Uh, so so this this is the like the, the the mat, these columns and walls. This is all part of the new. Um, the starter box, the new um, uh, Hive War. And um, so they tell you, <laughs> they tell you in these directions, they're like, um, yeah, you, it's a system where like these parts go on to these. And then that's like where the fresh air gets pumped into the underhive or, you know, like the smog or whatever it is. Um, and then you have these wall sections that go along here and like, that's all great. That's an awesome system, right? Like when I, um, when I was designing my, um, my modular thing for like Frostgrave and, um, uh, Warcry and stuff, this was a big part of the inspiration was this system like when i was looking at pictures of it i had never you know i didn't buy it like i just was looking at pictures of it online and then this was like a big part of the inspiration for it right my system works great <laughs> this is all right this is this is where we're going to get into the issue here So you, you put down your uh, fresh air pipes on these intersections and then you put down your walls and then this is like the, the zone mortalis or whatever it is. Like you just kind of make a little rat's maze out of these and then that's how you, you know, that's like the classic uh, set up, right? So then I, the add on that I got was these, um, uh, like platforms and walkways and stairs, right? You are not supposed to glue these up. In fact, I've glued these up more than I was actually supposed to. So in the directions, it tells you that you leave these parts out and then you can pop these in or you know if you if you follow the directions to the letter 
they say um, uh, don't glue any of this up take this part out flip it upside down like this and then you can stack them on top of each other that's how they stack on top of each other like that with all of that showing like am I am I crazy like what why so with the uh, the platforms and the stairs out on they give you lots and lots of these pieces and then a couple of like two of these that have two wings on them right so how this works is you take that out you put that on and then this keys into here right so that's flush that part is flush right there so why not just have a piece that keys into here why not just have a little piece that 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 pops into here and then you can glue these up and then have them be solid and then you can you know really like increase the modularity and functionality of all this stuff like, why? Why? Why would you do this to me? And then, like, you can make, uh, like, different structures and stuff and um, put, do, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. And then they even have, like, um, you can snap on, like, little... Um, uh little wings and stuff to make like platforms but nothing really like everything's like super flimsy with how it keys together so i'm like super disappointed <laughs> uh not with like the the starter kit stuff but with these like platforms and stairs out on this is like kind of junk i mean like i wanted to, what i want to do is i want to just glue all of these up so these are complete right and then i want to do like some major surgery on this stuff or just like build something out of scratch out of styrene and then take like really precise measurements of these so that um, so that this this system works together so like this this is cool though so these key into here right that's great that keeps that you know solid so I'm gonna measure these I'm gonna measure these because these fit onto here great and then that's you know solid it's like legos or whatever so why not uh just you're making me crazy you're making me crazy gw and then why not have like if you have lots and lots of these why not just have like a little bridge section that can go across why do you have why do you have lots and lots of these that like won't stand up on their own if you want to build a little bridge like you're making me crazy all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna re-engineer this stuff to something that works better but uh but i'm gonna start by gluing up all of these and painting these all right i uh i glued everything up no regrets, not a, a single one. Um, I, I like these, I'm happy with them. And then if I need to scratch build something, you know, some styrene like inserts or something, then that's, that's no big deal. Um, so I hit everything with some of this um, Rust-Oleum chalky finish uh, charcoal gray spray paint. And this stuff is great. It's just gonna be a really um, heavy duty layer of paint 
that's going to be my base layer for everything else to stick to. And then it's, it's going to be my shadows too. So first off, what I want to do is, um, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do a Zenithal coat. Uh, I'm going to use some of this um, uh, gunmetal gray, just kind of like a deep, uh, deep gray, oily steel. And then I'm going to shoot everything from above with the airbrush. So I want to keep my shadows, um, create a little bit of force perspective. And then, then I'm going to start doing rust stuff. All right, so I've got that uh, kind of gunmetal layer on there. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it didn't keep quite as many of the shadows as I wanted, but it still, still looks like that's the look that I'm going for. It's like a deep, uh, like an oily steel. So now what I want to do is um, start doing some rust stuff. And then I want to do I want to do salt chipping, um, uh, so yeah I'm using I'm gonna use uh, use Vallejo Model Air, um, but you know um, game color like any any kind of rust colors are gonna work the the airbrush stuff works just fine. Um, so, yeah, so what I want to do now is sort of create some rusty textures uh, where it looks like the, um, the metal is rusting. It's simple, Steve, like the metal is rusting. You don't have to make it complicated. <laughs> All right. So I am looking at some pictures like of what what I want my rust to look like. Let's see. Dark brown. So I'm using reference and then this is just a simple palette, but it, you know, it is a palette. So All right. And then next I need I need a sponge. Where's a sponge? So uh, yeah, I've got some nice, uh, nice rust effects on there, and then you know you can do a lot just with um, the stippling technique. But so now what I want to do is I want to develop those shadows, you know, and do like streaking in the um, with like rusty metal, you know. Uh, so I'm gonna use. Um, some Agrax Earth Shade, and I'm really gonna slop it on there. I'm not gonna be like sparing with it at all. Use a big brush, and then just kind of dump it on. But I am gonna tr try and keep it in the recesses, kind of uh, like sort of pen wash it a little bit. But that's gonna, um, you know, add to the effect that it looks like some of this rusty stuff is kind of 
like uh, seeping into the um, the recesses and collecting and but and also I you know I want some of that metallic metal to show through so that it does read as metal. <laughs> This is gonna, you know, bump up the contrast, add some, some, uh, some contrast definition. And like, I am working like an assembly line. Like I have the ones that are most done, the most dry are on this side, and then the ones that are like the freshest and wettest are on this side. So I'm working in this way, like uh, clockwise. Right, so things are definitely looking rusty. Um, I think this one is the most dry, but I'm gonna let these get totally dry um, before I do the next step because I wanna use um, some uh, chipping medium or like hairspray, something like that. Use either one. But um, for you guys who asked me about the paints, so first off, we've got um, Vallejo Model Air dark brown, Vallejo Model Air Rust, Vallejo Model Air Light Rust, and Vallejo Model Air Orange Rust. And I got all of these in a set. It was just like rust colors. And then I put um, Agrax Earthshade on top of that. So I'll show you what these guys look like when they're totally dry and we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so oops. Um, everything is totally dry. I, um, I let them dry overnight and then I um, sealed everything down with some, uh, some varnish. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I want to, I forgot that I was going to do this, but I want to come back in with my, um, my original, uh, metal color, uh, and then do, so this is just going to be like the finished layer like this. And then this I'm going to do something with later. So I'm going to come in with some, um, some of the, the metallic that I used with the airbrush and Oops. put some more on there and I'm going to use um, a really crapped out brush just has like the bristles are just destroyed and then just kind of mash it in so the the more you know uh, the, the rougher the brush is looking the better and then I'm just going to kind of like tap it And I'm trying to pick up like the little edges and stuff, you know? So if you were going to paint, um, like put paint on top of the metal, you would want to do that first and then like chip away at that. And then put the, like the metal on the, uh, last but I just want this to be like exposed metal so I'm just gonna go around and kind of do this stuff everywhere and I don't want to use the, the sponge because the sponge is just gonna be too much I want this to be uh, a very like much lighter effect and you could dry brush too Some salt shipping. 
So what salt chipping is, is that you take, um, this is like your rust layer, right? And then you take um, something like hairspray or uh, chipping chipping medium. I don't I don't have any with me right now. Um, I I personally I just I like hairspray. Um, I like Tresemme. <laughs> I don't use it on my hair, but I use it on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray some uh, on it. So this is going to create a layer that, um, oops. Uh, it's uh, just going to rub off with like a, a brush and then I'm going to, so I'm going to sprinkle it with uh, salt. And you'll see what this does later. It's kind of hard to explain. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, let that dry. This is just this is gonna create this really interesting uh, rust effect after I um, airbrush over this. So I'm gonna do that to everybody. <laughs> Okay, so these are pretty dry. Um, yeah, they're dry. S so now I'm gonna mix up um, another color to go over the top of this. And I think that what I wanna do is I wanna come in with a gray first to sort of look like a primer layer. Um, but I'm gonna thin it down a lot. Like I, I want this to be a super thin layer of paint and don't use actual primer you know use them um, like make a, a thin paint <clears throat> so yeah this is just going to be a super thin super super thin layer of paint um Turn on my compressor. All right, so I uh, I scrubbed in here, you know, I um, I put some thinner in here, and then like scrubbed with uh, whoop, uh, scrubbed with the paintbrush in there, you know, to get all that out, and then I dumped it back in here <laughs> uh, because I want I want this paint to be like nice and broken and. Uh, uh, just super thin. So now I want to use use some of this. Um, uh, what is this? <laughs> De Green uh, Verde Huevo Pato. I don't even know. Odenil. I don't know. Um, but it's a a light green color. So that's going to be just a really, really like crazy thin layer of paint. I mean, like this is almost water. Uh, because when I, when I scrub it off with the toothbrush later, I want it to just come off because this is going to be like the, the very lightest 
uh, top layer. So, and then when I when I did these guys, I kind of tried to concentrate it in some areas. Like I don't want to leave it in places where it's going to be hard to scrub off with the toothbrush unless I want it in there, like in, in here. Um, Okay, time for the really cool, fun part. Um, so the the salt that's on there, that's just gonna chip off on its own. Like that's gonna um, reveal like little pits and stuff, you know, in the paint. Um, like I can just brush it off with the toothbrush. Um, but, So what I what I want to do though to get the the, the hair uh, hairspray part off is I'm going to take um, a little bit of water, and just dip this brush in there, and then kind of just uh, drag it, and then that's going to just um, like scrape that really thin layer of paint off. And it's pretty random, like how it does it. But, you know, the the areas that are on the, the top, they're gonna get the most paint taken off. Um, and then the areas that are like the most recessed are just gonna get the least paint taken off. So just keep that in mind, you know, when you're doing this like you, um, spots where if you put a lot of paint like this part that's just going to come right off you know on the top but then this stuff that's in the little uh cracks that stuff is you're going to have a much harder time getting that out so you know just think about that when you're when you're doing the airbrush Right, so um, now, you know, like there definitely looks weathered. Um, so again, like if you guys are following along, the, uh, the colors, well, Vallejo Model Air, neutral gray, and then uh, Vallejo Model Air. <laughs> I said my Spanish is much better. Verde Huevo Pato. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know what that is. DE green. Um, so, and you you might notice that I didn't take all of the salt out of there. Like, um, first off, when I varnish them later, it's just gonna kind of melt. But I even like that it creates a little bit of texture. Um, so like, I'm gonna spray them with some more uh, some more varnish after. But um, right now what I want to do is I want to kind of bump up the uh, the contrast. Um, so like when I did the airbrush layer, I did a really, really thin layer, you know, scrubbed it off with this, and, and but it, there was some gray mixed in there. So to have like more of a high key highlight, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of some stippling just with that pure color. Uh, so, you know, again, like using my really crapped out brush. And then I'm just gonna kind of, just to make it look like there's some like little, really st 
stubborn chips of paint that are like sticking to there, you know, in some places. Um, and then just more in like the recesses. Um, but yeah, I want those kind of like chipped. And so, cause it does kind of look a little bit just like a, um, like a green rust from far away. So I want to emphasize that those are like supposed to be paint chips. Um, but you know, less is more. Just here and there, a few little spots. In fact, I might try and keep them up here on the on the top more and stay away from spots like that. Because I kind of want to make it look like the rust, the, you know, the whatever it is, the elements that are stripping the paint off the bottom down here. back in with some of this uh, this light rust and then just do like some kind of little edge highlighting stuff in some places uh, but you know again just very light touch just a little bit because it's really gonna bump up the contrast like this light color with the, the green and the red or, or orange very high contrast and then um, yeah, so I want to bump up the contrast a little bit, create some more interest. In fact, I kind of want more of a red. Might mix in just a little bit of this, uh, this red. More um, model air use my super crapped out brush. Oh, it's really watery. All right, forget that. I'm gonna use a different brush. So yeah, I'm just gonna use this, uh, this brush and then I'm gonna be very sparing, just do like some little Kind of like, um, just very like oxidized kind of rust. But you know, again, like not, not very much. Just want some kind of high key, high contrast, uh, spots. That'll really stand out. All right, and uh, I want to do these lights. Um, I'm really tempted to do some graffiti. I don't know, I kinda think I'm gonna hold back for now. Um, so to do the lights, I'm gonna go ahead and paint, uh, I'm gonna paint like in between here, you know? I'm gonna paint this white. Uh, and it'll make sense <laughs> um, later. But so, so this is where the light source is. So I want the, um, 
I'm just gonna do a white base for the light in there. I, uh, I like to think that in the uh, grimdark future of the 41st millennium, somebody has invented a better light bulb, you know, that lasts like thousands of years. And uh, this is how weathered everything looks that it's been out in like the elements and uh, still works, you know, like it's been in space or like derelict for thousands of years and all the lights still work. Right? That's how that works. Okay, so I um, just put some, some white in there because um, I want that to look like that's where the white is coming from. And I used uh, Minoth White Highlight P3. So now I'm gonna use the airbrush again to, um, to make it look like there's some white coming out of here. I think, I think I'm gonna use this uh, uh, transparent green, uh, model color transparent green. So, yep. All right, um, I think that's gonna be it for now. Uh, I'm gonna hold off. I really wanna do some graffiti all over these guys, but I'm gonna hold off. Um, and I'm gonna hit these guys with some dull coat some, or something to, uh, to protect them, just some, some varnish. Seal everything down because the, like I can still like I can run my finger through fingernail through this stuff and still like chip it off so I don't want it to come off from just being used so yep take everything outside varnish it and time to paint some minis to go with this all right thanks for watching take care guys